Hello, Hot Rod fam. I'm Corey, and this is Mad Rat Garage. Thanks for stopping by the shop today. Check out our 56 Chevy Nomad, we lovingly call Mozmad. Um, this week, we're going to be converting from generator to alternator, doing some custom work in the engine compartment, finishing up some loose ends um, with the brakes, and just overall starting to clean up that engine bay. So thanks for stopping by. Let's get after it. So I got the alternator in. And uh, had that bracket laying around. That is made for headers. That normally bolts up here. Go in around the headers. Well, that, uh, that piece was really close to the factory bolt holes. I had to elongate that one. And I want the hell? I've got a couple of them laying around here. I'm like, what the hell? How good is it going to be for the pulleys to line up? Got room to do this left or right. And as you can see, where it is right now needs to come forward a little bit. I have a good three-eighths of an inch to come forward. So, um, this is too far forward. It actually, perfectly straight on there would be riding right about on here. So I have plenty of room to move this forward. Uh, yeah. Now you can see the belt's really crooked. It'll ride perfectly there. My next problem is generator arm. This is as high, as close as I can get. Because the problem with my little bracket down here, this little bracket down here, is it normally sit straight up and down. Sit like this. And now because it's on that manifold, it's sitting leaned over like this not like this but like this because of that i can only go back so far and we hit that bolt down there but normally i could go but probably another three four inches which would clear give me that i'm not buying one they want twenty dollars for one of these i've got this one it's here i think what i'm gonna do turn it up off one of the head bolts put it a lot closer Again, I'm just doing this because this belt's holding it up. Um, that's how close we are. I only need four inches. First things first, we're getting that done. And I'm going to come back to this. And uh, before we get the belts and everything dialed in, take that apart and clean it up. And if I have it apart, clean it, I might paint it black. Black, black, black. But if I do that, we got to paint this black, paint that black, all at the same time. And I'll have all this blackness from top gold anodized gold anodized sticking out fresh little pulley black black cleaned up chrome chrome and uh power steering pump i got is down in there eventually is also chrome that i have and i've got those other valve covers to see if they fit if they do i'll have those it'll be also the the, that Harley texture paint. That's Harley engine texture paint. I have valve covers that are painted with that. But if I do paint this, that, that bracket, that's what I'm going to paint it with. Yeah, guys. Let me know. Let me know what you think. It's just one way for me to um, get the old girl freshened up and maybe just a little different. Don't have to have brand new fresh stuff. I'm just gonna paint it. I'm gonna paint it something different, right? Almost out of that Harley texture paint. So I'm gonna have to look to see if uh, the Harley dealer here has got it. It goes a long way. I hate spending that kind of money on paint, but when I'm bitching about a $20 or $16 chrome arm I could buy for this thing, um, see everything adds up. Here's the here's the doing it on a budget, guys. Here's the Corey's Corner tip 
of the day because it's been several days. It's not this video. This video is over several days, so you get several Corey's tips of the day. <laughs> Doing things on a budget. Still run out and buy everything. Um, pick your battles. What I mean by that is you can make something work that you already have, even though it's only 15, 16, 20 bucks to buy one. Make work what you have. Uh, if it's something to make it unique and original, and you're saying 16, 17 bucks for that, 20 bucks for that alternator bracket, I don't want to pay for. Why would I pay 35 bucks for paint? Well, because what I'm going to paint, if it was already painted by before I bought it, would have been a hundred dollars. Uh, they have a painted master, the bracket painted, and a and a black alternator. Just a black alternator is going to be 50, 60 bucks more than a normal one. And uh, the master and the bracket is probably another 50, 60 bucks. Different. The fact that we got what we got, spent 33, 35 bucks painting them to be custom and different, saving money, aren't we? They pick your battles and, and justify it in a certain way. We can do nothing. Eventually, one thing I hate about these old masters, they always flash rust and get crusty within a month. I need to do something. Let's see if I can take that alternator or this other one I've got over here. I need to have that one tested. If I can have that one tested, then maybe, and it's good. These are a lot easier to take apart the paint. And uh, maybe I'll do that. That's Corey's tidbit corner. How to be a cheap ass. Stay on budget. <laughs> Morning, guys. Another day. Another tinkering around in the shop. So uh, I decided that I am going to paint that stuff. I have about a third of a can of that Harley paint. More than enough to do the master cylinder and the bracket that holds the uh, proportioning valve. So I'm going to dust those real quick. I wiped them down already. We'll see what it takes to take apart that alternator. I haven't taken apart one of them before. Then I can figure out how to make a bracket for the adjustment bracket and uh, get that alternator lined up and in, and then we'll go ahead and get uh, brake lines put in. Kind of jump in order here. Should be putting the brake lines in now, but they got to be on the, the master proportioning valve. I probably should mock that up, but it's already too late. Already took it off. Already cleaned it up. It's already going to go. Well, there we go. Yeah. I'll turn you around here and show you what we're doing and what I'm using for paint. All right, so when you guys wonder what I'm talking about, if you ever looked at the engine of a Harley-Davidson, they have a textured black coating finish on them, and Harley actually sells it. I did look it up. It's about 30 bucks. Um, used to be 23 something like that, so that's the part number. Genuine Harley. And it just gets you a, a really good finish. I, I like it. It's more of a professional finish than some of the other wrinkled stuff out there. I already wiped this off. I've got a chrome cap, so I'm using that uh, this cap to just, you know. This guy here, all I really need is the top edge. This side, this sits back against the uh, master. I really don't want texture on there because I want a firm, when it locks down and tightens down, I want it firm. All right, that's it. So we'll let that dry. Last little wet coat. See the texture's already starting to come out on it. And it dries with like a matte finish without the gloss, which is good. That line there, but you can see the texture. That'll look good. Oh. Yeah, I think that'll look good. Let me get that alternator back out. And uh, see what it's going to take take that apart. And if it's going to come apart fairly easy, then we're going to go ahead and paint that black too. So I learned something from my last little... Uh, episode of having to re-clock the chrome alternator on the Chevelle and uh, brushes popped out 
and I had to take everything apart and I ran a wire and I was able to get it back together. But then after I put it together, I realized there's a hole on the back of these that holds those brushes out. And that's the hole. And it's spring loaded. You got to put the wire over here at an angle and get the hole and then it'll pop through and then you got to get it at an angle and get the second one and pop through and it went down and there we be. I'm going to cut this right here so that I don't have a bunch sticking out when I paint it. And uh, it should come apart no problem. Here's your tech tip. All right, guys, there we go. Painted. Right on the touch. A little bit of texture. From lid on. Much gooder. We like it. Here's the other bracket. I like that texture. I always have. Light. It's not overdone. Enough. Sit like this. Go ahead and uh, bolt that on it. A few moments later. I like it. Tell me what you guys think down below. Different, right? I haven't seen anybody else do it. A nice clean look. Again, it's the same paint I used here. Did that several years ago. I haven't drove the car much, so I mean, it hasn't had a time to really wear and tear, but then that gold proportioning valve just looks like it's floating out there. Can't see that weird bracket no more. Just don't like the way those stick out. Oh, painting it up. Hides it. Looking good. I do say so myself. The little things, guys. Sometimes something so silly and little make a world of difference decided i'm gonna buy a new alternator can't get this one apart it's got pressed in bearings and stuff so i'm just gonna leave it because it's a good alternator and it's a good backup for my ramp truck is what it came off of so i'll just keep it for that put this back on put it back aside and uh we'll be good to go that other one i had was externally regulated so not gonna work for what we need i'm just gonna have to buy i have to buy another one so O'Reilly's has got one. All I need is just a 63 amp standard because we ain't running AC or nothing like that on here. And even if we are, 63 should be enough. But um, I'm not going to be running AC on here for quite some time. If I do ever. We'll see. But we'll pick up that alternator on the way in tomorrow. After work. And uh, get that one taken apart. Painted the match, I think. Have a shiny fan on it and uh, paint the rest of the body to match. Got some contrast. Get them valve covers swapped over. Um, get them swapped over so that they're the matching to. Got a theme going here, man. We're just going to black out everything and have a couple of things. And we're doing it on the cheap. Again, this is budget. Low budget. I just want this thing to be a nice driving cruiser safe in traffic up to snuff to run with modern vehicles that i mean even now kia's a kia soul stops on a dime in comparison to old vehicles um technology so at least now with power even though they're probably a 50 year old design of disc brakes they're more than enough for traffic and uh we get this running right and then get the steering fixed along the way i ain't waiting to pull this out until i get the steering um i'm gonna drive it for a little bit and then uh figure out the steering part of it go from there that'll be the next thing like i always say don't wait for your hot rod to be perfect to enjoy it do a little something drive it have fun with it pull it back in the shop do the next thing so brakes and drivability right now is my main concern we should be done, other than little uh, liquid stuff. So, all right, let me get this up in the air, and we'll go ahead and get uh, get them brake lines run. Let's get after it. All right, guys, I'm a little confused at this kit right now. So, I believe this is the front passenger line. Bent out of shape for shipping, so we'll spread it open. 
this looks like what would go in the top kind of along these lines here and over to that side that that makes sense okay that makes sense but my rear brakes are on the driver's side and they give you this little guy with a union and the union usually is for the back brakes because you have to plug into the existing line that's already here so they give you this little guy but this isn't a back brake line one it's too short two um there's no big enough ferrule to go on the back because on these proportioning valves the back side is always a larger nut and then it would go to a smaller nut the ferrule to hook up to the existing line and go and they're acting like they know that this is for the pet driver side but it doesn't really line up with anything so it could be a line that goes this way out the bottom of the proportioning valve to our front driver side and somebody just put that on the wrong side I can kind of go along with that and make it work. That's fine. Here's the big nut for the rears. It would come off the back just like that. And what? Go all the way to the passenger side? I might be getting ahead of myself. I could have swore. I, I thought I saw a distribution block on the frame for the driver's side. Brake line. For the rear. But I believe my dad's was on the passenger side because I did have the union in over there. So I guess my next job is to get this puppy in the air and see for sure what I'm working with. Because this goes into the union, which goes here, there, and back. And I believe that junction block is right there on the frame. Now, put it up and find out. All right. That's, that's lucky. You see right here. This is the three-way T. This is what I thought was going to the back. But this part on this side actually goes up and around. And is what went to the master. On the other side of this T going that way. Goes to the driver's side front. And then this goes around the front of the motor. And comes out right there with another T. One that goes to the passenger side, and lo and behold, one that goes to the back. So, we're going to go ahead and uh, take both of those T's out, because we don't need them anymore. And run our lines. Good times. All right. Let's get after it. For those of you who don't know, <laughs> I'm a klutzy... And I bump my head in underneath these cars all the damn time. I don't know. I must be a cone head because... I think things are this high, and I'm always running into them. My depth perception or whatever, I'm bumping into stuff. This is a bump hat. Any of you guys using uh, some kind of lift or anywhere where you're bumping your head a lot? I like these brimless ones because when I'm under a car, I don't bump my brim when I go to look up. Um, so I buy these brimless hats. Basically a baseball hat without the brim. Got a little fold on it. And you can buy the little shell that goes in here. It's a hard shell for bumping your head into stuff. You won't knock yourself out. <laughs> so those of you who ain't familiar with my channel, I've been wearing them for a few of the videos. And I tell you what, they've saved my head more than once. And every time I don't wear one, it knocks the sense into me to remind me, go put your damn bump cap on. So see me under there wearing this weird hat. That's why. That's what it is. Clutzy me. Bumping into shit. I don't need to get knocked out cold on camera. Might be funny for you, not for me. All right. I've been on there since 56. They're not going to want to come nicely. This side's just wanting around, and I don't have a... This side's just wanting around over. I don't have a line wrench for a 3 8 I don't have any line wrenches. I got one. 7 16s, which fits the other side. 
Yes. The only line I need to save is the one that goes to the back, and if I cut, I release the the T, the brass T's that everything goes into. They're bolted to the frame on both sides. If I unbolt them, cut the one easier, cut this side, everything will come out. I'll be left with the T and the going to the rear, and I can be able to maybe manipulate that in a position that I can get two wrenches on it and work it. Worst case scenario, I tube cut it, and then I have that Union T put in the vise, put some heat to it, work it off, put it back on, reflare the end, and then I'm good to go. That's all I know. Now you know. A few moments later. All right, a little struggle bus. Some time later, got those lines out and the new ones in. <laughs> Good lord, that took some finagling and weaseling to get everything in and out. Worse than before, and then, you know, no directions whatsoever on where you wanted to go. So I had, a, had the back line here. Fished over with these lines over here. And that didn't work. So that had to go behind the steering gearbox between the um, pitman arm or idler arm then back around and out oh there's like nine turns in there but looking pretty good a little clean up but it's all tight it's all in over here got everything out got that one ran and then uh that union down there is the reverse there's the rears, and that back one coming up to it. Let's see, no way to film it while I was doing it. It's too dark, too much in the way. So we are one step closer, guys. Till next time, guys. <laughs> Wash up and head her home. Welcome back, guys. Another day, another trial and tribulation. <laughs> no, it's all good today. So. Went ahead and bought another alternator. Found one at O'Reilly's, one-year warranty, Wilson brand, which is a good remanufactured company. Uh, I was like 58 bucks. Do something with tax. What are you gonna do? I had an externally regulated one and another with two modern one that wasn't coming apart very good. So. Went ahead and bought one for a 76 Camaro, which is a 63 amp standard. It's actually got I don't have to clock it. I was actually looking for one that was at the three o'clock position, thinking I was going to run the wires down the valve cover and over, but naturally the wires automatically come down the firewall on the driver's side. So this one's at a nine o'clock clocking for the new plug that goes in. So it'll just come out the side of the alternator and then run over to, to the uh, inner fender well. Someday I'll rewire this whole thing and run the wires the way I want, but this is what's there. Don't have to dig in and redo. Maybe I'll put some extra wire on there and loop it down and out of the way so it's not so in your face. So. But I am going to take this one apart and I am going to paint it. So, get after that. Once again, on my nice, clean, well organized workbench. Yeah, I can knock that off. And I got this better better looking pulley than this in thing, so let's go ahead and do that. I like that better. All right. 
that's better. Now, fifteenths. Get that separated. I've only done this a couple of times, guys, just to change clocking. And being I just did it on that chrome one for my brother, it just got me thinking about I can paint this, make it look good, All right? So, not much to them. Until it's rebuilt. So, big thing we we're trying to avoid. This one doesn't even have the holes in it. Huh. Anyways. These guys come off. Huh. Don't lose the springs. <laughs> I thought I'd got a big shot out. Hard part about those brushes. Brushes right here. Rings go in here, and these go in like that, and then they ride on the spring. And what I was trying to do from the back side, you get them pushed in far enough, you can get a wire. Usually there's a hole in these, but you can reach this hole here, and you can kind of wiggle them, wiggle and get the hole and push the rod in, and then those sit in, because you can see the hole, you can see the hole here, Goes all the way through and it holds them back. So when you take it out, the springs don't pop and all that kind of stuff. Um, these must be the kind of must be the kind of stuff we're dealing with. Doesn't have holes in it. What does that mean? Find find your finger dexterity to do it. Got that wire right there. Springs are in. Those little blocks are back in, and that'll hold it. If I can put it back together, I can pull it from this side. I'm going to tape this off. I don't need to pull that. I can probably raise it a little bit. Tape under there. That off. I wonder why I get these ideas in my head. Just make more work. For me. No? Is it worth it? Yeah. It is when you're done. A little details. This doesn't cost me nothing. Just time. Time, time, time. A little bit of paint. I guess it doesn't cost me exactly nothing. But degree need a little hotter but they don't ever make it hot enough from exhaust manifolds but this works and it eventually kind of gets a a weathered look but it takes care of that pink look that's there and i don't mind if i hit the valve cover because it's chrome and it'll clean up and if i use those other ones these are getting replaced anyways um but if not because they're still in good shape little steel wool little uh, thinner, take it right off the of valve cover. I get a kick out of this. 
Because, I mean, it looks just like... It looks just like... Cast Iron. Take much. I do a couple coats that last longer, or it changes color. But look at that! Night and day difference. Looks like a brand new manifold. Crazy. This side a little different. Um, I gotta take this off first. I still got to figure out what to do with this, but I ain't messing with this until I uh, figure out what I'm going to do once I get this painted, get that back on, and uh, I'll mess with it if I'm buying a replacement or if I'm altering that one. Amazing how that wakes that up. Got a few things to figure out here. One that never worked was uh kickdown switch. Never kickdown rod never really worked with this uh metal brock. Is it wide open? I can't go to wide open because that's wide open for the kickdown switch. And that's wide open for the actual carburetor, so not much play in here. See that? That's the relaxed plate. I gotta get some kind of between here and here, some kind of link. And I think we'll have a, or fabricate a longer rod. Plug wires coming up on, on the fence. It's the nice brackets I like to use don't clear. I don't think they clear these exhaust manifolds. Factory manifolds always sit too high. I'm gonna have to do the weird ones that bolt up with the three and the four piece. Not a huge fan of those, they work. Like something a little more, a little nicer than that. Now we're getting there. Look at that. Already way nicer. Then I come back for any place that I got a little uh, overspray on what doesn't need to be, and I touch up the black last. A few moments later. All right, guys. I think. Turned up pretty good. Go ahead and get our little all um, our little dead nabbits out. <sighs> I was supposed to just take that off. Why did the whole damn thing come out so easy? <laughs> I got that whole damn thing to do again. Nothing can ever be simple. Dad, nab it. That was pretty good. Coverage. Getting there, we're getting there, we're getting there. Like that's sitting in there until I get it lined up with the belt. Figure out what to do with this next. But tell you what, that looks good in there. Match to that. That. New non rusty manifolds look good. We're getting there, guys. Slowly but surely. Hey, guys. Doesn't take a lot of money. Just take some time, some patience, a little ingenuity, make things a little different. Oh, let's get from here. Looking at it in the camera here to see what we're looking at. And yeah, respectable. Again, not Dave Kindig, not uh, Chip Foose. As much as I like and appreciate those guys, 
a normal human being here. Just like you guys out there. One reason why I'm doing the videos. To show you some of the stuff that uh, can be done. On a low budget. With a little bit of skill. Now with YouTube out there. If you're smart enough. I'm not being, I don't mean dis disrespectful, but we got a lot of YouTube mechanics. You know, people that think they can fix anything. Because they saw it on YouTube or they saw it on a, on a TV show and the guy was able to do it so I can do it, right? Yeah, that, that's a good attitude to have. But you also need to know your limits. You need to know and understand if you understand what you're looking at. Um, what I always tell people is, you're not going to know until you try. You're not going to know what you don't know until you try. But watch 10 videos of 10 completely different people telling you how to do the same job. And if 7 or 8 of them are doing it one way, and the other two or three are doing it completely different. Laws of averages. Seven people, unless you've got really bad luck and pick the seven worst people on, on YouTube. Those seven people are going to have probably the right information for you. Follow that to a T. Until you understand yourself why and what you're doing. It's as simple as that, guys. Don't just watch one video and go, oh, this guy said do this. And then go out there and do it and think fixed it. Because you're taking your own life in, in your hands by making something unsafe if you don't know what you're doing. So until you know what you're doing, take the advice from 10, 15 people. In. I can show you how to do stuff. And I'm the first person to tell you I'm the, I, I can show you how not to do stuff by doing it this way and going, oh, yeah, I shouldn't have done that. That didn't work out. Let's try it a different way. Um... You got to know your limits. I'm willing to try things and uh, break them. You, you can't wreck anything. You get to a point in this world, in this genre, this hobby, this lifestyle. You get to a point where you've done it long enough that I know it's only metal and I know it's only parts. If I wreck something, I usually can fix it. You know? Um, one reason, you know, not so much with this car, but square bodies, yeah, they're getting rare, but you know what? There's a million trucks out there. They made a million of them. And if you screw up on one of those, nobody's going to hate you for it. You know, buy yourself a cheap truck if you want to get into this business and into this hobby. Buy yourself a cheap truck and do all the work. Nobody's going to hate you for screwing up and just go back and fix what you screwed up. If it's metal repair, figure out how to do it. Figure out how to do it the right way. And you did it the wrong way and I messed it all up. All right, cut it up, make make the repair bigger and go back. Fix it. Do things on a budget by doing it yourself. I'm rambling. <laughs> but what, what I'm getting at is you don't have to spend a lot of money to have a cool car. You don't have to spend a lot of money to have a car you think is that you appreciate it gives you pride makes your heart flutter when you're behind the wheel and you're driving it because you said hey you know what i did i figured it out i fixed it i upgraded it i made it better um even though it ain't perfect you got it to that point and that's what i love about this hobby about this lifestyle about this you know hobby this hot rotting family we're all in. I might do something that'll make you go, hey, I never thought of that. You might do something to make me go, hey, I never thought of that. That's a good idea. We all share, we all grow, we all learn. So, so tomorrow I am going to go ahead and get the carb lined out and maybe change them valve covers. All right, guys. Till manana. The next day. Hey right, guys. Another day. Another day here in the shop. So, got a little bit of work done. 
Um, nothing for you guys to see. Nothing too elaborate. I'll just show you the end product. Um, something simple. Fix my uh, alternator fitment issue. And I'll show you what I came up with. So, sandblasted. Sandblasted the old uh, the old bracket. That was the distance we were missing. And I had this bracket strapping. And uh, I just trimmed it. Not the not the coolest, most high tech way of doing something, but um, the belt's tight. The belt's tight. It gives me about a half inch of adjustability. Um, don't need much. Painted that. Made that little. Yeah, making peace. And uh, we're in. Simple. I'm going to wire it up. And uh, yeah. And we'll move on to the carburetor. I ran to the store on the way into the shop today. And I'm going to have to make a new rod that goes for the kick down for the power glide. Because it's, as I showed you before, it was a bit too short. And uh, I'm going to give my hand at. Trying to make a new rod. I went and bought a new cap because the end on here is quarter 28 fine thread. And I had a quarter 20. I could have redid this, but for fine adjustment, you know. Um, and just tried it without, I didn't film it, but uh, there I threaded the end there. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, Take that off, put it on this end, get a measurement, because I got this three foot rod. And yeah, see if we can make it. I bought a uh, um, I bought a rod bender. Eight, nine years ago. Seven, eight years ago, whatever. Never used it. I don't know if I can if it'll bend it tight enough. Otherwise, I'll have to heat it up and uh, bend it at the anvil. Don't really want to do that because I don't want to mushroom out the head. Uh, yeah, what I said. Um, I don't want to. I don't want to flatten out the head, and uh, then it won't fit through the carburetor, the hole in the carburetor, because the hole in the carburetor is an exact fit. It really is. Once it's in there, it moves fine. But it really, of any any. The formation of the uh, the rod going in there is going to be not so good. So let me uh, let me bend up that rod, measure and bend up that rod. I'll show you that. I'm gonna find my rod bender. Um, but yeah, we'll go from there. I'm gonna figure this out. I haven't used it, like I said, bought it years ago. It's from Eastwood. It's just a simple thing. Bolts into the clamps into the vise. You have this, which you are able to go around and, and bend and then there's a stop. Um, see how that's walking that around. That's a 90, and then I can just zip it off there. Yeah, that's hydraulically bent over a square. You can see the squareness of it. I ain't got that luxury, so this isn't too bad, though. Zip it right there. I'm okay with that. I'm going to figure out how to... Get a good measurement on it, and I can always uh, 
make that better. Let me make sure I got the right threading before I go through all this. I do need this on there no matter what. This is still too coarse. There's only two types of threads when I looked it up. Quarter 20 and quarter 28. Well, there's a quarter 18, but that's really coarse. Quarter 28 is really fine. This is finer than this. What in the hell? Now i got to figure this all out. All right. So, this back here in the back is the lever for the kick-down switch. That needs to be about there. And then it comes to here. And when you go wide open, so I need to mark it from there. And then it needs to follow that line all the way back to there. And I got a little bit of fudge room. And my, my happy-go-lucky uh, threading job I did. It's the wrong thread. Looks like it's a metric thread. Doesn't make any sense to me. And we need to get a 45. So, um, so what I'm doing, leaving that bend that we made, and then I'm gonna make one here, coming at a little more than a 90, it looks like it has to cut back. And then I'll cut the ends to fit, and we'll use those throttle clips. So what we're doing this time, guys, is, uh, I was, I did, <laughs> thread the end for that piece send it for adjustability is why it's there but it said this is a quarter quarter rock if you thread it you can thread it for quarter 20 which is the course and quarter 28 28 is the fine thread I went and bought for fine thread it ain't fine enough. So I don't know if there's some kind of machine thread. I'm not, I'm not uh, versed well enough in it all. But uh, what I'm gonna do is bend. We'll just bend it to work. That's what we'll do. It needs to be at a 45. 45 down there is roughly. I'm just eyeballing it how it looked. It's 90 and it needs to be a little more. Let's look and see if that worked. Um, it's out a little further than I wanted, but I got some fudge room. So let's check it out. Where we're gonna land. There. That'd be good. I'm gonna chop that. Alright, we cut it. Let's see how we're doing. Full movement and no I'm not flooding my engine because the carburetor is completely empty still hasn't put any fuel in it yet and I think we got the angles right and uh, I just need to shorten that these throttle linkage clips I have to buy more but I want to see if this is gonna work it's fine I have to drill a hole in it and put a cotter pin if I can put this on the carburetor there's already one of these on the back lever back there that goes to the tranny 
that's what this one is. So I'm going to try it here on the linkage and see if, if that'll work. Why not? Seems just fine. So I will pick those up today. uniform one more coat and we'll put her in all right guys new day one more project off the list got a rod on it's painted it's on everything's all set up everything works as it should it's got full travel full relax that worked out pretty good and as you can see I got rid of uh, plug wires and uh, I just went ahead and ran them the way they're supposed to be ran. Um, I didn't know if they were done that way. See down here, I got plug wires. But they run down to the oil pan, and there's a clip on there. So these two clip there. The two back there just run up to a little holder in the back of the block, and then they come up behind the valve cover. Same on this side. So that was normal in 56. Um, I didn't know how many years they did that for. So I wasn't sure if that had been there or not. And supposedly they ran them that way till like 75, 74, 75 on most vehicles. So put her up in the lift, got underneath there. Sure enough, the original brackets were still there. And this is a 71 El Camino motor, motor out of an El Camino, 350. Um, was in there when we bought the car. And uh, you know, like I said, we bought the car in 81. 82 something like that so it was a 10 year old motor um two barrel two barrel motor if i didn't mention it before or you skipped past it uh so yeah i just got to look it underneath there and i was like ah and and dad always buys the wires he, he always going to go i got i need plug wires for a 56 chevy and he used to run them uh along the valve cover and everything and down and over and, and uh i guess and it, it's hard it's real hard to run those without having a lift. Um, you know, to get it up on jack stands and on your back and get in there, it's really hard to maneuver because it's it's a tight spot, but only one arm fits through to, to feed them behind the block into that holder back there that holds them away from the block heat. So without a lift, it's a little bit easier. It's still kind of a pain because, I mean, you're, you're doing this with your hand and getting up in there and through through different areas. So it's a clean look. I'd love to do it on every vehicle if you could, if you could get away with it. Uh might have to start looking into doing that because again where's the wires <laughs> you know you got no plug wires making a mess making a whatever so they run along the pan and, and up the block and then then just behind the behind the manifold there so works for me i have one wire that i might have to replace over there we'll see how the car runs there's a little cut in the wire but it wasn't all the way through the core and that it's not near any metal or anything else. It's out of the way. It just got pinched when he was running them wide. So I might have to replace that one. We'll see. In one of these drawers, I think I have that exact style of wire. So I can find the right one and just kind of rerun it. Oh, I still got a wire the alternator. It's the wire that went to uh, the temp sender, which is, again, by the manifold. Um, it was laying out here, and when I grabbed it, it fell apart. So put a new end on it and everything and put it on the temp sender. Eventually, I'm gonna have to get a. I gotta find a plug for that inch and a quarter plug to plug that hole up. Don't need outside hot engine air blowing in on my nether regions. Uh -oh, what do you think, guys? It's 
coming along nicely. Like we always say, perfect? No. Good? Good enough. Um, I'm gonna clean up the valve covers. I'm pretty sure I tried them other ones on here that I was talking about and they don't fit because the back corner of that one is already almost touching and these valve covers are another inch taller so I might have to look into doing something different but I'll polish these up and clean them up and make them nice and shiny again. They're pretty much new when I put them on here. Nicer wire loom stuff to kind of clean up my wires like I like to do. I think I got enough left over that I can do that. We should be, and then bleed the brakes and I should be ready. As long as the brakes bleed properly and there's no weird leaks anywhere. Um, oh, I still have to, the steering wheel is perfectly straight. And you can see that wheel's turned in that way. And that wheel's turned in that way. So it's pigeon toed. I need to get under there and at least uh, get them as straight as possible. I know I did the alignment on the 66, which was really out of the whack, the wag, Nova Wagon, and that thing's perfect now. I mean, it goes on the road with the wheels perfectly straight, don't pull nothing. I mean, I don't know if it's right or wrong, but it's going to be that way for now because it's not going anywhere um, for a bit. Run those wheels out a little bit. Wire that alternator. Got to find a battery around here somewhere. I think I got one that's charged. Next day or two, we can start her up. She hasn't ran in. It was in this garage the first six months I was down here. Then we brought my dad's car over and I took this and put it in my dad's place at his house. So three years. Going on three years. It's And I drove it over there. Haven't drove it. Started it in two and a half, three years. And then it'll be uh, polishing chrome and cleaning it up time. Got work to do.